Well, we've been out at AFC Wimbledon's new assistant manager, Terry Skiverton. Terry, good to have you here with us. You've been out there on the grounds with the players starting to get through pre-season training. How's it taking shape out there? Yeah, I think it's really good for us as a, a management team to, first of all, be introduced to the new staff and start to build relationships and get to know about the players and you know who are the who are the pushers, who are the ones that need to be pushed, and and seeing who the characters are as well. Obviously, we've done our due diligence and our homework on them, but it's really nice to to get here and see them in the flesh. Is there a buzz around the place already? New kit as well. You've got on there, I can see. Yeah, no, it's a very retro feel about it. So the lads are very happy with it, and um, by all accounts, all the supporters are as well. So nice change and. On the back of you know maybe what people would consider a, a really disappointing year, new start, new kit, and there'll be a few new faces as well that will be coming in. So it's um, you know very optimistic, and, and it's been a positive first few days. What kind of sessions do you have at the moment? You know, is, is it a little bit of running, a little bit of work with the ball as well? It's been a, it's been a mix. So first day was testing and just to get back to a little bit of feel with the football, um, different parts of um, the foot. You know, using the surfaces just. You know, a new little part to the training ground. We've been using a new little bit of a facility as well. So just something a little bit different for the players. And um, yeah, a nice introduction back in with some physical work as well. Absolutely. And of course, you know, you want to get them back up again, smiles on faces, but working hard as well. Yeah, and it's just been a good response this morning. Yeah, very good uh, response. And uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really fussed with uh, smiles on faces. I'm more, more into hard work, um, really having a real sort of positive, strong day. And really showing us what you've got and um, being impressed with the, the men so far and um, yeah, long may that continue. So of course moving on from your previous club you got back into football very quickly you see the situation around it was it too good an opportunity to miss really? Yes you know, we didn't need to be sold on the idea of it when we came down here with Charlton towards the end of the season um, couldn't believe the atmosphere for where the club were the supporters was magnificent and it was almost like you know, we, we felt it was like a proper, proper derby day. And, uh, and, and me and the manager, after the game, we ended up coming out with a draw because of a horrific sending off in that game. Once I know more about that. But um, we were just really impressed with the building, impressed with the place, but most of all, impressed with the, the, the way the support got behind the team. And if someone gets that going, which, you know, our aim is to come in this season and really get it going, um, that could be an absolute fortress and an unbelievable atmosphere for these young players to play in. And that's something you're well aware of, yeah? I mean, that the fans have played an absolutely massive role in this club and getting back to, to play a lane, yeah? You can see that and that's, you know, it's almost in the, the core and the brickwork of the football club and with it also coming back to play a lane and, and with the connection with the supporters. Um, I grew up in an era, you see, so um, I used to play for Wimbledon's B team, which was Chelsea. So, because um, there was a lot of players from Wimbledon that went to yeah. Chelsea, I was in, I was a young apprentice and a young pro in the change room with Dennis Wise, um, Terry Phelan, um, Vinnie Jones, Mick Hartford. So, yeah. I know what that time looked like, and I know what um, character that was, and why Wimbledon was so successful during that period, and why they used to go to, why they used to beat Liverpool and Man United was because of these types of people within the club and the connection with the supporters and you know that's something that us as a management team are really mindful of. Well I was going to mention that as well of course I mean you're saying about starting out with Chelsea as well I mean at a time when of course a lot of Wimbledon fans associate that with the 1988 cup final but you look around the mid 90s Wimbledon were pushing to get into major finals weren't they, they were a top 10 Premier League side so you obviously remember a lot of those days back from then yeah? Yeah there's it's been some unbelievable you know managers and Dave Bassett you know, Bobby Gould, Joe Kinnear. So when you look at the history of the football club and the people that have really driven it as a management team, you know, they're all characters as well. So, you know, we know the history, we know what AFC Wimbledon really does look like and we know what we've got to deliver as well. So for us as a management team coming in from the cold, we know a lot about the history and what, you know, what the supporters want to see. And I'm not saying we're going to come in and it's going to turn into the crazy gang, but you know we need to be a little bit more street smart as a football team. We need to see our games better. We need to be a little bit more professional in the way that we go away from home. And you know, with, there's been some unbelievable work that's done in recent years with the promotions of the football club. But now we've got to make sure that we sustain something and drive it forward and look to get 
back to where we feel the football club deserves, which is in League One. Let's talk a little bit about that working relationship that you've got with Johnny Jackson. How far back does that go and how sort of deep does that working relationship go with you two? Uh, first of all, I was um, a manager when Johnny was the captain of Charlton. Uh, I was a manager at Yeovil Town and I think that was the only game where he got sent off because uh, we, did a, we did a good job on Charlton <laughs> that day. I think we drew the game and um, I think that stood out in a, in a memory of him. We, we, we've got the same sort of circle of friends and um, we did our coaching qualification together. I was a year earlier than, than the gaffer, but um, yeah, we came together on the pro license and we sat down, we had a few chats, and yeah, when the opportunity came up to, to work with Johnny Jackson, I was, I was impressed with what I saw on the, on, the, on the coaching course. I'd heard great things of the work that he did in really trying circumstances at Charlton, and to turn a club around that was you know, looking doomed, um, he did a magnificent job, and for me to come in and, and be part of that second half of the season, I was, you know, I was, uh, I was flattered with the, with the, the offer to go and work. You've got a lot of experience, of course, as well with Yeovil Town as an assistant manager. What's the key things that you bring to the role, in your view? Just basically working in the gaps of, you know, the way that the gaffer does work. So, you know, helping with coaching, helping with recruitment, and. Um, you know, it would be the, the tactics going into games, bits of in and out of possession. So my job is to make sure that he's got his energy. So, you know, if there's anything that he needs in and around the training day, organisation, um, dealing with players, that's the part that, you know, I bring to the party. And, and also to challenge him as well, um, to make sure that we as a, a team are going out there and some people, are, you know, you can have worshippers around you saying, yes, Gaffer, that's brilliant, that's... No, I've got to be there to question and say why, why are we doing this, when are we doing it, how are we doing it, and why does it look like this, and to give a, a different opinion at times, not all the time, but you know, if I feel that there's a, a different way of presenting it, and then the manager may have two, and with other staff as well, with Rob and with Bezo, where you know, he might have two or three different ways of, uh, of going into something, but as soon as he makes a decision, that's when we all go with it and we, we, we do everything we can to make that decision pay off and get it over the line. And from what you've seen, of course, in your time with Yeovil and more recently Charlton, there are key ca characteristics of a Wimbledon side that, that you want to bring out of them again, but also you want to add to that as well, yeah? Yeah, the characteristics that we saw, especially from sort of the, the, you know, the last few seasons, have been um, really exciting, really young, um, very open and expansive football. We look to do things a little bit differently, um, especially with the way that with coaches and, and the way that the club went before and, uh, and and basically still keeping that you know exciting play exciting young players and giving them you know the uh, empowering them to go out and really express themselves and I felt that last year Wimbledon definitely done that um, in League One and the things we'd like to add is obviously a little bit more of a mindfulness on not conceding so many goals especially in the second half of games being more resilient um, bringing a, uh, an organisation and a structure to that exuberant play and, and getting results. You know, that's the biggest thing our supporters deserve is for, to see wins. And we need to get back to that and need to get you know, over that sort of scenario, especially that second half of the season. And the way we do that is a little bit of a balance between the two. And um, the manager is very rock and roll and he likes to he likes to really get at teams and I'm a defensive coach that doesn't mind attacking so I think our styles complement each other quite well and um, we really do find a balance to, to get results and we did that at Charlton and we're looking now to come into AFC Wimbledon and, and drive this you know drive this model forward. Is there a good cop, bad cop or is it a little bit of both in both of you? At times it can be bad cop, bad cop. Um, then he's good cop, I'm bad cop, and then he may be in different cop, and then I'm still bad cop. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that might explain a little yeah. bit of my, my character. But no, it's, it's an everything to win. And when you've come up the leagues and been a, a smallish type club like Yeovil, and go from the conference all the way up to the championship, um, but also seeing relegations as well, I know what both sides of the coin looks like. Uh, I know when danger signs are there, but I also know when the going's good, when we will look to add and, and, and bring more and push harder and, and, and motivate as best, as best as I can. And along with the gaffer and the way he works, um, with Rob and with Bezo now and, and with Chris. And a, and a big thing about the, the driving force has been Mick as well. Um, 
Nick Buckley who's, who's really sort of given us a vision of how he wants to move forward and along with the board how they want to move forward as a football club and you know I think the two align and it's something that we you know we both share and we really want to bring it to life and let it come to fruition and really show our supporters um, what we can do as a football club because we've got some very good football players that are still in the building and there's not much to tweak and there's not much to change but they need help and um, you know the, the one thing that we are going to be doing is we're going to be being patient and we're going to bring in the right fit for the for the football club and making sure that you know these players are not see young players anymore because now they've got two seasons under their belt, a season, a full season of games and rather than knowing what little battles look like, they know what a campaign looks like and a campaign is when the pitches start to die in uh, December, November, you know, when January comes around, when the, when the, when the, the, you know, the bullets are flying, they know what that looks like, they know what it smells like and it's important that when now they're coming into their second, third season, we as a management team are really going to benefit from their experiences of the past and we're going to look to change that into a real positive one to help drive this club forward. That's good to hear. Just going back to one point you were mentioning there about uh, your time with Yeovil as well, of course a tremendous achievement getting them up to the championship, being a part of that. Can you draw a lot upon those experiences that will help on this occasion now? Yeah, because it wasn't all about budgets and um, you know we had to pull rabbits out of hats, we had to go and get players that may have been cast aside by one club and then bring them in and, and, and turn them into you know proper football league players and players that compete at the other end of the um, at the other end of the table. And we've done that by having young players such as Ryan Mason, um, Luke Ayling, we had Alex McCarthy, you know, uh, Stephen Corker, Andros Townsend. So we had loads of young players, but then we also had really good experienced ones like people like Paul Watton, James Hayter, um, these type of players that then would help bring the younger ones together and create that team spirit and that work ethic to, you know, drive the overall forward. And um, you know that's something and that's a model that we're really looking to try and implement here as well. Yeah, I mean, of course, that's that's really key as well, a part of the the old Wimbledon and now as well with the academy they've got, bringing through players of their own as well. Quite a few of them have been out on loan last season at non-league clubs. You're very interested to see how they perform coming back into this environment, yeah? Yeah, we've had, uh, you know, Robinson and um, Cosgrove have been training with us, you know, and um, Curry. We've been really impressed with them. Um, the, one of the biggest things that the, the gaffer did do, especially when he was at Charlton, was, was bring young talent through. Mason Burstow, um, the manager gave him his debut and he played him a lot and then he ends up going to Chelsea um, for quite a lot of money. And... There's been others, I think it was five or six debuts that was made, young, the young boy Kanu, who was a centre forward as well, that got into the team. So if they're good enough, there's definitely a pathway there. But if they're not ready, the, path, the pathway will have to take a little while because this football club's got to get back to winning as well. So getting the balance right and making sure that we're a, a club that does look towards the youth and give youth a chance, but also has to win as well. One very good addition already, you've got Alex Pierce to drop down two divisions to, to lead two. I mean, he's going to be a real leader in that dressing room, but obviously at this time of the year as well, supporters are going to be interested in, in further additions. What, what can you tell us about how that's coming along? Yeah, I mean, we have to be patient because, you know, we're, um, we're really close on two or three. And um, the thing is, is that when you're looking at experienced players, but you're also looking at good players, as well as some young ones as well, and maybe one or two loans, but there's other people in the market. And what we've got to do is we've got to make sure that we're, you know, we're, we're, we're competing with the other teams that are out there at this league and the one above and we need to make sure that we're bringing in the right characters and the right people that will drive this club forward. What we don't want is players that are coming in for their last payday. We're looking at players that are going to come in and drive it forward and want to have you know, a good last three or four years at the football club that looks like a winning season, looks like a couple of winning seasons. And you know, our aim is of course is to get back where we are but but also to make sure that we put the process in to to say you know we're going to be there thereabouts this year and we've got to go again and again and again to make sure that the football club doesn't appear in the wrong ends of the league and because it's still a competitive league league two and it's a, a very tough division to get out of as we all know and um yeah right people but they will be coming in and it'll be at the right time so you're like hopeful of, of perhaps first picks, but if it doesn't even come off, you've got plan B, 
underneath that, yeah? Yeah, we've been working with the recruitment team and there's, you know, there's, there's loads of processes that's been put in place and um, as we said, we've got some very good players here, but we all know that the, where the gaps are within the squad and you know, when we fill them, we just ask that the supporters are a little bit patient. We don't need the wrong ones in now, we need the right ones in at the right time. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but you know, we, we, we know we'll get there with you know, the positions that we need to fill. Great to hear, Terry. Really good catching up with you and welcome to Wimbledon. Thank you very much.